I'd like to turn our attention now to an intriguing question, which is, who owns the Federal Reserve System? You often hear this topic discussed on talk radio. Whenever the subject of money or the Federal Reserve comes up, inevitably, somebody will get on the telephone and say, did you know that the Federal Reserve System is not a government agency at all? It's a private corporation. It's run by the private banks. And what we need to do, they'll say, is to abolish the, uh, abolish the Fed and turn it over to Congress so it can be run for the benefit of the people. Well, I'd like to deal with that because we, <laughs> this involves uh, a half-truth and a non-solution. Let's start with the half-truth first. It is true that the Federal Reserve System is not an agency of the federal government. As I mentioned before, it is a corporation chartered by Congress. And like all corporations, it has stock certificates. And these certificates are held, in this case, by the member banks within the system. All the banks, remember this is a cartel, independently owned banks make up this system. They hold the stock certificates. Now up to that point it looks as though this has all the attributes of a privately held corporation. But that's as far as it goes. Because these stock certificates do not carry with them any of the powers of private ownership. For example, the holders of these stock certificates cannot sell them. Well, if you can't sell something, you don't really own it. Because that's one of the tests of ownership, is your freedom to dispose of it in any way you wish. Also, the larger banks have put up more capital into the system than the smaller banks. It's not a lot of money, but it's related to their assets. The larger banks put up more, have more stock certificates than the smaller banks. And yet, regardless of that, all of the banks have one vote. So there's another violation of the principle of private ownership. Furthermore, that vote doesn't buy anything but substance. These banks cannot vote for their national management. The Federal Reserve System is run by the Board of Directors of the Federal Reserve System, the National Board and its Chairman, all of whom are appointed by the President. The stock certificate holders have no voice in that whatsoever. The only thing they can vote for are the members of the Board of their local regional banks, so-called banks. But guess what? The Chairman and the Vice Chairman of those regional banks are appointed by the National Board. Guess what? They can vote for their officers of the regional banks, but they can be overridden. The National Board has veto power over those people. You get the picture here? In spite of this sales job of this diffusion of power over the 12 regional banks, these banks have no power at all. It's all concentrated in the national board. The only thing that the regional banks can do, according to their charters, of any substance, is to set the interest rates within their regions. But guess what? Even that is subject to veto by the National Board. So you come to the conclusion 
that these people at the national board are not authorized to do anything except play golf. See, that's the way it was designed. This fiction of this diffusion of power throughout the system was just to sell it to the American people in 1913. It's a vestige. It serves no function whatsoever today at all. It was never designed to. So we don't have a corporation in the strict sense of the word, a privately held corporation. And we don't have a government agency in the strict sense of the word. So what do we have? Well, the fact is we have hybrid. It's a mixture. It's half government and it's half private. It is, in fact, exactly what you would expect it to be, considering that it is a partnership between the government and a private cartel. It's half government and it's half private. So this structure is unique to reflect its unique form. But this isn't so important as to who owns it, how many shares of stock, and what the voting is. The question is, what does it do? Insofar as merely abolishing the Fed, as many, some people have said, many people have said, abolish the Fed and turn it over to the Treasury or turn it over to the Congress so it can be run for the benefit of the people. Always, always make sure you say it's for the people and that makes it okay. It would do the same thing over there that it does over here. It's not a question of who owns it, it's what does it do. And as long as it is a central bank, which means as long as it has the power and the mandate to create out of no money out of nothing, that's what it's going to do. It's going to create money out of nothing, and I'm sure the same people will run it over there that run it over here.